Happy Facebook Live time and welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse and to another episode of Treehouse TV. <laughs> um, I took last week off so I'm really excited to be back. I've got tons to cover with you today um, and share so I'm just really excited. So comment let me know if you're, um, when you've joined in, your name, where you're from, just um, anything you want to share about yourself would be great. I love to know who's out there um, watching and with me. So we're going to cover several things. I've got announcements. I've got um, three projects that I'm going to share, sneak peeks of the Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle. And I've got some products I want to show you. I'm not going to show you a ton. I'm going to show you what I had received in my pre-pre-order that I kind of showed you um, very briefly uh, two weeks ago. It had just come out of the box. And um, so I'm just going to show you those things. Next week I'll have more to show um, for my pre-order that for things I ordered on December 1st, which incidentally arrived today. <laughs> it's in a big box on the table across the way from me. My uh, UPS orders always come in at like 6 or 6.30, like right before I go on. So um, I see people joining in. Yay. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Vicki. Welcome. Good to see you here. Um, hi, Gail. All right. So let's just launch right in. So um, some quick announcements. First, I'm going to show you the products second, and then I'm going to do project demonstrations, talk about my anatomy of a design process or building, pro building blocks just briefly, and then we'll close up from there. So that's the basic agenda for the evening. So um, just to start with, um, you guys know the January June mini catalog is coming out. Um, I have ordered mine. They should be arriving at my doorstep any day. In fact, they might be in that big box that's on the table over there. Um, and uh, I will be mailing them out to anybody who's a regular customer, anybody who's purchased from me uh, $50 or more in the last six months. And I'm usually liberal with that. I kind of go back a little bit longer than six months. Um, but there is a place to um, let me know that you're interested in getting a catalog. If you intend to purchase through me, I'm always happy to send you a catalog. Um, so just let me know because those will be going out. I'll be preparing them in the next uh, week and a half or so. Um, takes a little while to get those ready and in the mail. Now let's see what else. So in this week's newsletter, which went out yesterday, always goes on on Wednesdays, I forgot a few things. Um, well, and actually just forgot one thing. And one was to mention my Taste of a Sweet product shares, which are coming, I promise. And I'm, I'm uh, the box that's over on the other table is going to be all, a good fraction of it is all of the goodies for me to create the, the sample um, uh, share, uh, share products so that I can show you um, what a share looks like. So post pictures to my website and all that good stuff. So I get to play. <laughs> cut it up and divide it and all that. I just love that part of doing these shares. So anyway, that will be in next week's uh, newsletter. The December 9th newsletter will have links. I will have all of that information up on my website by then. So you can look forward to that. Um, the other thing that happened in my newsletter was one of the links um, was, uh, well, a little bit of a problem. So it was for my Makers Mojo Creative Escape event. And the link worked if you were using a, a computer, desktop computer, or maybe a laptop. But it didn't work when you looked at it through your phone or through a tablet. And I didn't realize that until somebody brought that to my attention just this morning. So I have fixed that problem. And so if you uh, were trying to go and check out that event on your phone or a, a tablet, now you'll be able to do it <laughs> from the link that was in the email yesterday. So just FYI. So speaking of that event, it's not until January 30th. Um, a, I am collaborating with two other talented demonstrators to bring a ton of great content, um, cl class materials and projects um, to you. Plus there'll be a little um, a technique um, play time that I'm gonna be planning as well. Uh, there'll be door prizes and um, there's an early bird uh, special deadline. That is December 14th. So that's coming right around the corner. If you sign up uh, before December 14th, either as a paying person or if you're getting it free as one of my team members, um, you will be entered into a special drawing for some products in the new January to June mini catalog. So if you're going to do it, sign up soon. <laughs> I'd love to have you. The more the merrier. Um, it costs $40 if you're not getting it for free as a team member. So just FYI. Uh, let's see what else. Um, you have until January 28th to register, but of course, if you're gonna, you might as well do it early to be in the early bird um, drawing. 
Okay, what's next? So December is a great month for demonstrators because we get to pre-order from the mini catalog. Um, now, if you, um, it's also a great time to buy the starter kit, right? So if you buy the starter kit this month, then you get to add things from the January to June mini catalog in your starter kit. So it's a completely customizable kit, $99, you get $125 in product, um, and you'll be able to add things from the January to June mini catalog into that order if you just can't stand to wait. <laughs> like me. Um, now, once you place that initial starter kit order, any other orders that you place in December, you'll also get to pre-earn celebration sets. So that's one of the great perks of being a demonstrator. So there's lots of other benefits as well that are offered through Stampin' Up! and it's an amazing community. But there are also some special things that you can um, benefit from joining my specific team. Um, my team is called the Treehouse Chicks, so um, uh, we're all chicks in a tree. <laughs> Um, I think that's yeah, it's my cute little thing. Anyway, um, if when you join through me, some of the things that are unique that you get from me is you get access to the electronic materials for all of my technique classes as long as you're an active demonstrator. Um, you get at least one Maker's Mojo Creative Escape event for free, and you can qualify to get future events. And the, the bar is not super high, so lots of demonstrators that are on my team will definitely qualify for future events. And the intention is to do them every... Um, every quarter. So um, we're excited about that to provide some great contact content to our team members um, and um, customers who want to join in as well. So let's see what else. So that's what else you get. I do a monthly um, creative play event with my team and we do monthly idea challenges as well. Um, plus I give um, perks and benefits when people promote um, and other uh, sort of recognition types of things. So that's kind of, you know, why you'd want to join and become a chick. And hopefully, um, if you resonate with me and my creativity, then maybe we're a good match. So if you have questions about that, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you decide if it's the right choice for you. Basically, get a discount on all your orders, minimum 20%, and it goes up the more you sell. So it's pretty cool. Um, let's see. So that's... I guess pretty much it for my um, announcements. So I'm gonna go to turning my camera face down. We're gonna look at products first. Um, and I'm really just gonna be showing you products from I think it's three, three product suites and then some celebration items as well. In behind me are some of the things that I'm gonna be showing. <laughs> I'm just gonna be grabbing behind me to, to get them and put them under the camera. So without further ado, I'm gonna face the camera down and I'm going to show you some goodies. <laughs> I am just loving these products. I can't, I can't say that I've had a chance to play with them very much because we were traveling for Thanksgiving. Um, but uh, the ideas are churning in my brain. So I bought the whole suite collection for this art gallery suite, which comes with a stamp set and this set of dies. And those words, um, I know what they say. Just want to say. <laughs> that was pretty funny. It, almost the same thing I just said. And then, of course, some dies for cutting out the flowers and um, some frame pieces for the sentiment. So really nice. Should be fun to play with. And then this, of course, you guys know I love embossing folders. This one's going to be so much fun to play with. The painted texture 3D embossing folder. And then, of course, to the consumables which are just so fun. Okay, so I showed you this ribbon last time. I had to open it up because I think I might be obsessed with this ribbon. Hopefully I'm gonna find good applications for it, but I just love how it's got that um, natural look, but also the glittery gold in there, just so pretty. And I would love it if you guys would comment and tell me which things you especially love as I'm showing them. Um, yes, oh, you, oh, I see, Heather, you really like it too, wonderful. <laughs> So fun. I think that's going to be really popular and easy to use because it's very supple ribbon as well. Easy to tie and whatnot. So this is the um, Art Gallery Designer Series paper designed by an artist, actually painted, as you can see, with oil, and then they photograph um, the pieces of um, artwork. So it's really a pretty amazing. So I'm going to show you front side, back side. The back sides are always sort of more um, neutral, if you will, and... Um, tend to be less uh, less going on. So there's a second one. And the back side with, of course, the paste look. Or maybe it's oil paint, I don't know. Next one. 
so pretty. It's nothing like seeing it for real or big on a camera um, rather than in the catalog because it's so tiny in the catalog. This is, I think, probably my favorite of the florals. And it does have a, um, another piece that goes with it. I'll show you that in a second. This is another one. Definitely right up there with my favorites. And I don't think I showed the back side of that one. You can see that one's just pretty subtle um, pattern there. Uh, yes, I see, Nancy, you love that glitter ribbon too. <laughs> Yay. And there's the last one that is the floral and then the backside. I love this kind of pattern. It's just kind of neutral enough but has enough interest and texture. So that's, a, that's definitely a fun one that I really like. Now, the other thing that comes in this suite are these wonderful, um, what are they called? So I don't even know what they're called. They're plastic sheets, but they've got um, gold embossed images on them and they overlay on top of certain sheets of the designer paper. Now, this bottom one, I didn't exactly find one that it laid over perfectly, but I think this one was the one that I liked it the most on, and it's flexible enough so you could use it in a whole variety of ways. There is another pattern that's similar to this one, but it didn't, it didn't fit right over the top, so uh, it didn't seem like it was necessarily the right one. So, here's the, the one that fits on the second acetate sheet. I think that's what it's called. So you can see it lays right over the top and I could see it being just raised up just a little bit. So maybe you can see the difference. Anyway, it's so pretty adding that bit of gold to the outside of those floral images. And then last but not least, this one, which I know lines up, but I think I turned it. It lines up somehow. <laughs> I need to find the right spot. Oh no. There it is. I think I might have had it first at the beginning. So there you go. So there's the, um, the paper with the overlay. So super beautiful. Just beautiful and that's going to be so fun to play with. I can't wait. All right. Let's grab the next one. All right, so this next one is the well-suited suite. It's, you know, shall we say the token masculine um, suite <laughs> that they always seem to add to the catalog, but some really simple, pretty patterns in here. I think I especially love that one. And nice textures. And of course, this suite, um, I did not, not buy the stamp set, but it has, um, some wonderful dies, and I've seen the cutest little things, maybe some of you guys have as well, um, with a shirt. Basically, you can make shirt and collar, and um, uh, just so much fun. This is actually one of my favorites. This is a little more feminine. Of course, I would like the more feminine one, right? Simple, simple patterns. So these should be really pretty easy to play with, whether you use them for a masculine card or not. Um, those should be really versatile papers. And then part of that suite is this twine, and it's basic gray and knight of navy. So that's, um, those are going to be the products that are in that well-suited share. All right. This one I'm going to show you quickly because I'm pretty sure I have showed it to you already, or at least most of it. But this designer paper is just so much fun. Cannot wait to play more with this. Um, I did a project with um, my team at our last Creative Play event using this paper. So I'm just kind of giving you a little sneak of each one of them. I like to fan them out like this. Makes it easy to show, especially with the 6x6 six six papers. And then I'll go ahead and turn it over. So there's a ton of different patterns, all natural, beautiful colors. I'm in love with this. Um, I love this one, of course. That's the one, the featured one. It shows up on the front. Love that. There's another one with the small little dragonflies. Now, there is a dragonfly punch that goes with it. It's got the small and the large dragonfly, which do overlay over uh, some of these. That one might be too big. I'm not sure. But I know there are some of the papers where um, it, you can punch it out with um, the punch. Just love these. Some bees in there. I don't know what kind of flower that is, but I like that one. Anyway, just super fun paper. And then 
this ribbon, the Mossy Meadow um, braided linen trim, these adorable little ladybugs. I don't know how I'm gonna use them, but I think they're so cute. I like anything small. <laughs> uh, memories and more cards, and memories and more um, uh, cards and envelopes. So those are, they're big, but they, it all fits together. So super easy to create cards that way. That's it for the, it's a garden dandy, dandy garden. I think that's what it's called. Remembering all the names of these things is always such a challenge because there's so many of them. And it's ever changing. All right, so last but not least, I got a few celebration items to show. Uh, this is not actually celebration item. Can you believe I haven't taken these out yet? It's just because I was gone for Thanksgiving. Can't wait to use these. These are the blending brushes. I love that there's a handle and that it's a round little top. So much fun, can't wait. This is my single favorite celebration set. <laughs> The corner bouquet. I think that's going to be real fun to play with. And then there are three designer series papers that are as part of celebration. This is definitely one a highlight for me is the designer papers. And there's the six by six one that is the ombre, and then um, these other colors on the back side. So super pretty, versatile papers, especially these ones um, where you can, you know, play around with that. I can just see stamping on those. Next up, now I only have two of the designer papers so far. The third one is in the box. That's across the way from me. <laughs> um, but I love them all, actually. Really, really pretty. This is like the bold, bright, beautiful. Wasn't sure if I was going to love it, but I do. I love it. I just That is just so delicate and pretty. Just can't wait to use that. Not as much my favorite colors in this one, but it's okay. Love that. How can you go wrong with daisies? Oh, now that. That's right up my alley. Kathleen, I'm talking to you. <laughs> we were talking the other day about how we love the vines and green and foliage and <laughs> anything fern. And then that's a really pretty one, too. So much fun to have these products in hand. So much fun. Okay, this one... I want like a, a bedding, I want bedding of it. I want curtains. I want it all over my house. <laughs> I know, crazy. I'm a crazy lady. All right, so that is it for the products. I hope I didn't take too long doing that, um, but I couldn't help myself. Okay, so Simple Sweet Stampers Tutorial Bundle Projects. Today, um, the, the featured suite is the Snowflake Splendor Suite, and I'm missing one thing. Where is it? Oh, here it is. And in fact, I'm not even using the stamp set today, and I have done projects with the stamp set, but today's projects, mine and the two other design team members, are um, done with this winter snow embossing folder, just beautiful, and the dies. They, they're just taking center stage today, and just love these snowflake images too. I could do it all day long. Play with snowflakes. Favorite, favorite thing. All right, so... Um, the first person's design that I'm doing is Patty Dolan's, and I'm actually pretty much copying her design exactly almost as is. <laughs> um, and so uh, there was no design for me in this. You know, I'm talking about the, the design, uh, what do I call it, building blocks of a design process. I didn't design anything. I'm just totally stealing the idea from her. Complete case, and you know, that's all good. So I've got some adhesive on the backs of some of these pieces. I'm starting with a piece of white that's just going to be right here on the front of my navy. Now where I could use stamps on this is to stamp on the inside because you want it to be coordinated, right? I haven't set up to do that today, but um, that is something I probably should do. All right, so now I have die cut some snowflakes in navy and the white. And I actually took one of the images from that stamp set. Oh, I am using an image from it. And I stamped it in Night of Navy, Snow, the Snowflake Wishes for a Merry Christmas, um, right in the mostly center. It's kind of justified up to the top. Now, you could have just stamped on this. And I, honestly, when I made mine, um, I did stamp right on this. And I estimated my spacing by putting my die cut piece over the top. Now, you can see I've die cut this with that open die that's part of the set of dies. Put those out here so you can, can see. And then I kind of laid it down and I tried to stamp in the opening. 
But this sentiment, it fills up the whole thing, right? It's, it's not the kind of thing where it's easy to get it in exactly the right position. I don't know how Patty did it, but for me, I decided I would cut a smaller piece, one that could easily be manipulated in behind to get it in just the right spot. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually put some adhesive on the back side, which of course you can see I stamped it twice on this one. And because I'm working on one of my little plasticized sheets here, I'm gonna actually put it face down. This is just gonna make my next step a little bit easier. Make sure I got it facing upright. I've got dimensionals on the back side already. I've removed the backings just to make it easy and quick since I had a lot to cover today. And I have it so that the snowflakes are towards the bottom. That's what Patty did. Now, incidentally, Patty is, um, she was my travel buddy um, when uh, I went to um, a Stampin' Up! convention. I think it was back in 2017. And we had met because um, a fellow demonstrator, um, she was on, in somebody else's team. And, okay, that's just going to have to do because I put it down. It's a little bit not straight, but that's okay. So, um... And we became good friends. The first event we went to was in Savannah. And so when we went to the onstage event in um, the convention, essentially, in Salt Lake City, she asked me to room with her. And then I said, what do you think about traveling? We went down to the um, um, manufacturing facility in Kanab, Utah. And it was the most fun I think I maybe ever had. It was so much fun. We had so much fun together. So we became really good friends. So ode to Patty. Thank you, Patty, <laughs> for this design. Um, now, I forgot one step, but I think I might just uh, go with it, and then I'll see what you guys think of the different designs. So I've got dimensionals on here. This piece is all set, and as you can see, yes, I've stamped it on the back, but there's plenty of room on the sides, and the dimensionals are underneath, but now I have adhesive on here, and I don't have to put it on that sort of uneven surface with dimensionals back there. So now I can just put it right on the front of my card. And it's got this little tiny white edge around the sides. I think I might like it better how, how Patty did it. You'll see the other version that I did because it's how she did it. Um, but just because I forgot that step. Okay, so now I'm going to take some glue dots. One of my favorite things to do to get dimension, if I don't want to use um, dimensionals, because I have to cut them super tiny on this, is to just roll up a glue dot. So I'm just rolling it up into like a ball. So there's my little glue dot ball. And I'm gonna put it right in the center of my navy um, snowflake, okay? And then I have glue dot balls <laughs> stuck in the centers of my other ones so that I could do this pretty quick. And I'm just overlaying one over the other. And then these two lay one over the other also. Now these are the same size, so I'll just turn it by a little bit so I can see it well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, well, and I have, I have the little rolled up glue dots on the back sides of these as well. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and place them on my card. And I've just got one other quick thing to do. Just gotta find my Good position here for my snowflake. And this is just such a pretty, simple design. Just love it. I want to make sure that's got something to sit on. Just like that. And then, of course, I have to add some blue adhesive back gems. I think these may be one of the most popular things in the current holiday catalog, the August to December catalog. Now there's two colors of these gems, the ones that are sort of more bluish and ones that have a, I don't know, maybe it's a darker bluish in there. Um, I have not generally been drawn to these darker ones, but they go really well with the navy. And I think they look better to me than the light blue. Um, I think, I'm not sure which ones Patty used, but either way, I'm just using these ones because I like them. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the one, the version that included the step I forgot. <laughs> and 
Um, so this was the one Patty's, Patty's design. She sponged a little bit of the balmy blue uh, ink, just, you know, with the regular old little sponge. I could have used my little new sponging tool. Dang it, if I'd only thought of that. <laughs> Silly me, I'm just not in the habit. All right, so anyway, you got your plain, plain old white, and you got the one with the little blue accents. I don't know, tell me which one you think you like. You won't hurt my feelings, because um, I think I like the one with the blue better. <laughs> Patty. Yay, Patty. I could probably go back and do a little sponging if I wanted to. So um, any comments? You guys let me know. Okay, so that's project number one. Just leave that off to the side while I set up for the next one. And the next one is actually somebody I also met in Salt Lake City in that same, that same event um, that was back in 2017, if I'm recalling correctly. Um, Debbie DeShane is her name. She lives in California and um, really enjoyed spending time with her as well. We didn't travel together, but um, so this card is a super sized card. <laughs> super fun, super sized, big one. Um, it measures a nine by eight, and then of course it's scored at four inches or folded in half. Um, this is Misty Moonlight cardstock, and of course, this is some of the Snowflake Splendor Designer Series paper. Now, I as have die cut some shapes out of this balmy blue glimmer paper. Um, I'm going to be using those shapes. I just, you know, I like to be efficient in how I use what I have. So to cover all that up when I knew I needed those shapes, just couldn't stand to not cut die cut them right out of that piece. And this is just going to go straight on the front of this card. Hopefully I can get on there, centered the first time. <laughs> okay. Pretend there aren't any holes in there. <laughs> I know, it doesn't look great that way. But then I'm using this absolutely stunning designer series paper. And, of course, I could use that side if I wanted, but this is the side I especially love. It looks so much like snowflakes, like real snowflakes. Okay, now, I was going to take my regular adhesive to use it, but that doesn't really work very well on the glimmer paper. And I don't really want to put adhesive in these areas on the back because then it's going to kind of push it down. So I'm just going to use some of my multipurpose liquid glue. When you're gluing onto glimmer paper, uh, the multipurpose liquid glue is the, the best bet. And I'm just going to do it so that it's pretty, not too close to the edges because I don't want it to ooze out. Let's see. Here, we'll do this. Put the glue here and here so I know where it's going to go. In the center part, anyway. Okay, so now I also do want it to stay down at the corner, so I'm going to just kind of train my glue. <laughs> Did anybody else train their glue? I know, it's a silly thing to say. Just going to put it near the edge so that just a little bit just to make sure that it's going to hold down without oozing out the edges. I don't like when my glue oozes. Anybody else agree? No oozing glue, please. I've grown addicted to doing that thing where I let the glue dry and uh, just let it be tacky. And that way you really can control your glue. But I figured I didn't really need to do it for this one. All right. So now we've got this nice little subtle balmy blue glimmer edge. This is just such a crazy extravagant card. Love it because of the paper and that glimmer in the background. Just beautiful. So thank you, Debbie. All right. So now we've got some pieces and parts. Now I did add one additional layer to my version, and I changed out the ribbon. Now this suite has this lovely ribbon in it, and um, Debbie had three of them lined up, but I'm kind, and, and, it, and it looked great, but I'm kind of addicted to this um, metallic mesh ribbon. I just, and I think it looks so icy and snowy that I just couldn't resist but use it. And then I also get the width um, that I, without having to attach three pieces. So I'm going to start by attaching these, or this, I should say, just by tying a knot. And I love when it, how it looks when it's, um, when it's cinched up, so when it's tied. Because 
it really shows the sparkle. Okay, where do I want it to be? Kind of towards the top. I can move it, but it's just a little bit easier with something this big to get it in the right spot to begin with. All right. Isn't this just such pretty, pretty ribbon? I just can't stand it. I think I bought an extra roll of it because I just, I thought, I want to be able to use as much of this stuff as I want. I could see it wrapping Christmas presents and, I don't know, put it in my hair. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of silly, but. Okay, now I'm going to just trim it off. I might have to trim that a little bit more when I'm, let's see. I want it facing the same way. Okay, comment and let me know. Is, am I the only one who just adores this, this mesh, or am I showing it to you for the first time? Have you seen it before? Um, I got to look at your comments. Okay, I see a, I see hearts. Yay! Um, I did learn at some point how to do hearts. So, you know, sometimes I ask you guys to do hearts for me. Do hearts it makes me so happy. All right. <laughs> All right, so one thing I'm going to do before we start with our assembly, and I'm just looking for my thing in front of me. It's sitting here on the table. Here we go. Okay, so with my dies, one of the things that Debbie did on her design was she used um, some uh, shimmery white cardstock. So you can see a little bit of the shimmer in there. And she also used foam adhesive sheets. So this is a foam adhesive sheet. And I've attached one side with a piece of shimmer paper. And then you can die cut shapes with this. So it's really pretty fun because then, unlike what you've seen me do in the past, you can have a raised up detailed shape without having to mess with all those little tiny dimensionals like I most often do. Now, it works best if it's not a super detailed shape. So I've already die cut this. I ran it through several times. Um, and to make sure that it really cut it. And if you look on the back side, you kind of can tell. And this shape is like sort of the perfect uh, level of detail. The, um, the big snowflake that I did, so you can see I just kind of was able to work it out of the foam um, and it cut well. Um, and then it comes out of the die super easy as well. So you can see right there. And then I just need to poke out those little extra pieces, bring in my little mini garbage pail here that I love, and just get those out. Now I have done one um, of these already um, in this size and have it ready to go, and then I have one that's a big one. I'm going to show you that in just a second. That one was more challenging to get out of its... Uh, you know, to do what I did here, which was to take it out of the shape. And so anyway, I was able to do it, but it was, uh, it was challenging, and I, I might actually have preferred to just put my damn dimensionals on the back. Oh, sorry, I just swore, didn't I? It was not really a swear, was it? Um, <laughs> you know, there's only so much fussing you want to do, right? As you can see, I have to fuss a little bit with this to get those pieces out of the center, but it works pretty well. Little messy, tiny pieces. It wants to stick. Okay, I think that'll do it. All right, so we're going to assemble this one element here. I've got, let's see, let's get that over here. I'm going to show you that in just one second. So, my pieces, I've got this piece of seaside spray. This is the one layer that I added that was extra. And of course I need to use my white glue so that it'll stick to my glimmer paper. And for me, it just made the, uh, the, the glitter paper show a little bit less and have the same general edge as on the outside of the card, which made it a little bit more subtle. And I kind of liked that. Plus this um, seaside spray paper ties really nicely to this paper that um, I'm using so and then this has adhesive on the back it's I've uh, die cut this with my 
squares for my stitch shape framelits. I used the three smallest sizes in here to create all of my little squares. And the glimmer paper squares are also die cut with the stitched edge squares, although you can't really see the stitching too well. All right, so now I've got my little snowflake to add. So before I add it, I'm gonna put a little wink of Stella on here because it's got the shimmer from the shimmer paper, but it's not very, it's not a, a strong amount of shiver, shimmer, so I just wanna add some more. I see Sharon, you, I, I'm getting hearts. Sharon's giving me hearts, yay. One purple one, one red one. Love it. Thank you, Sharon. Okay. So, there we go. That gives me some nice little shimmer on there to add to the shimmer paper. And then I'm just gonna tear, pull off the back. Isn't that lovely how that happens? And the whole thing is raised up. Gotta love that, right? And then for this one, let's see. I'm doing it on the diamond, so the way I like it is to have the point of the snowflake. I'm just going to use this to hold on to it. It'll help me with my placement so it's not sticking to my finger and my finger won't be getting in the way of seeing where I'm putting it. So there we go. Perfect. Love it. Now the other ones are mostly assembled. So now this I wanted to show you. This is the big snowflake. You look at the back side and it's the paper back there is kind of a mess. I really had to work at getting this out of um, the foam sheet, you know, this piece. It die cut okay, but it was just so much detail that it was hard to get out. Now I did manage to do it, um, but like I said, not sure I would choose to do it again over just dimensionals given how much I had to work at it. The little snowflakes worked great though. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure all my backings are off. And then I'll be able to place it down. And I'm gonna go ahead and, that's the other thing is that this one is so delicate with those little elements there. I did actually tear one, not one of the foam ones, but just uh, one of the other snowflakes I used on the third card that we'll be doing. Okay, so you can see I'm being really careful with it. And I do have the Wink of Stella on that already as well. Okay, so I'm all set with that. Now all I have to do is place it on my assembled piece. And I like to do it so the point of the snowflake points to the point of the square. I know once I put this down, there's gonna be no moving it. So I'm trying to get my placement just so. And it's wanting to stick to my finger. Hello, off my finger. <laughs> Does anybody else love these dies? Have you done projects with them? I don't know how I'm gonna stop playing with them because I just love them. And we don't really get much snow here in the south, so. Let's see. But that's okay. Snowflakes are good anywhere. All right, so now I got my two pieces and I've got a third one that's already done. Has all the parts and pieces. Yay, hearts, I see hearts flying. Thank you, somebody. <laughs> you know how happy that makes me. All righty. And now, let's put this baby together. This is the final touch and then we just got some of the gems I'm going to use. So I do want this centered and I am putting it over the top of the ribbon. And I'm not going to press it down in the hopes that if I need to adjust my spacing, I can do that reasonably well. Might need to pull it a little bit to the right. Ah, yes. Those fingers are in the way. Okay, we're getting there. 
So you guys get the idea. Ooh, so stunning. Is it not stunning? <laughs> Thank you so much, Debbie. This is a fabulous design. Probably have to make a custom envelope. I don't know if it will fit into a business size. It looks like it might actually fit into a business size envelope. Something to have to, I'll have to figure out. So there we go. Now, I'm just gonna adjust my ribbon a little bit. And it's underneath, so I can't adjust it, silly me. Yeah, I guess I can do that. So I'm gonna just bow that a tiny bit. I want it to be a little bit up. And then I think I'm gonna take a little glue dot and put it under my knot there and sort of pull it off to the side so that it's not feeling like it's right in the middle of things. So we're just gonna do that. And that way it kind of frames that um, diamond at the top just a little bit. So there we go. There's my card. There's Debbie's card with my little twist. I hope you guys like it. I think it's pretty fun. Extravagant card. <laughs> I think it's quite extravagant. Very fun. Okay, you guys ready for card number three? Mine is actually quite simple. Um, and I have done, uh, I've done an original version and I'm probably going to do a variation of this one just to see what we think. So I've got a piece of pool party cardstock right here and a piece of the designer paper. I'm going to choose between the front and the back and actually Let's do this first. Okay, so on this design, before I leave this design, I just wanted to say, I think I mentioned this, the, the seaside spray layer was not in there in the mix. And I think it partly was because the balmy blue is very subtle against the uh, misty moonlight. So I wanted to see it a little bit more. And I think there's a little bit more contrast with the colors being more different. So that was one thing I changed. Oh, and I need rhinestones. I need these gems, these beautiful gems. How could I forget? Um, but again, that's really the only thing that I changed aside from the ribbon. So which colors do we need here? Do we want the light one? Yes, we want the light one. A big one in the middle, and then we'll do a little one on each of the small ones. It needed that, didn't it? You guys can comment and agree with me. <laughs> I think you might. Ugh. Oh my gosh, it's just so pretty. I gotta do like, here's a close up. You guys can really see how beautiful that is. All that detail, so pretty, so pretty. All right, thanks again, Debbie, yay. Okay, on to my project now. Okay, so mine's pretty simple. Now what I started with was, I had this vision that I really wanted to use the one die in this set that I have not managed to use, and multiple times I've gone to, to die cut this snowflake thinking that it was going to give me this shape, and it didn't, and I surprised myself. So basically what this does is it cuts a negative space, right? So it cuts a negative, an opening. It doesn't cut the snowflake itself, it's, and it's kind of amazing to me that I did it like more than once where I cut it out thinking I was going to get the shape, and then I got the negative space. But anyway... I really like the look of the negative space. So this was really the main inspiration for this project was using this die. And of course, the size of the die determined the size of the focal piece, which made it pretty easy. And then I knew I wanted it to show up um, so that it would really show through those the opening. So I decided to use a piece of that balmy blue glimmer paper again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just place it on there, and I'm gonna do it on the back side, actually. So I've done my little trick where I've put white glue on there um, so that it's tacky but not gonna ooze, and that's partially, partially just to save time um, as I'm demonstrating. And of course, this wasn't upright, so just gotta do a little bit more on the corners. And I just sized it so that Doing it backside. I'm going to make sure that my openings are covered. So I'm putting it on the backside so I know the openings are covered. And I didn't want it to be too wide because when I had it a little bit too wide, it actually makes the paper 
pooch up, if you will. It doesn't lay as flat. Um, so there's that stunning focal piece with the glimmer paper. Just love that. So this was really the inspiration for this whole card. Then I started playing with the designer paper. And I love this designer paper. It's Bombay Blue and Pool Party. But interestingly, this glimmer paper is called Bombay Blue Glimmer Paper. But it's not exactly... It doesn't really look like Bombay Blue. I mean, really. I guess it does kind of there. So I didn't really want it necessarily right next to it, although it actually looks really pretty right like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm eating my words. But um, I decided it looked better with the framing of the pool party than the framing of the Bombay Blue, given that I was going to use this paper that had both colors. So I'm actually going to attach it to a piece of pool party. And I've got my foam adhesive sheets on the back. You guys know it's the other new product I'm addicted to is the foam adhesive sheets. Um, and then, now here's where we got to decide a few things. So, on my original version, I'm just going to show you guys. Well, I'll just do it with this version. I'll do it this way, and then you can tell me which one you like better when I'm done. Because, because that's okay. This paper is really pretty, and when I was looking at the two, it was like, oh, I really like the original version, but it's so fun to see a different design, so I'm just going to do it this way. So as you can see, this piece of paper, this designer paper, doesn't go all the way to the top. There's a little gap at the bottom. I did that on purpose, and honestly, I think it might have been because this is the size scrap I had. So I thought, okay, we'll design around the scrap. Why not? So now I'm going to have this that's going to be centered top to bottom, side to side. So let's go ahead and put that one on. I love I can take those pieces off so easily. And then I'm just going to wrap this ribbon around and tie it off to the left. I think my, my card might actually be the simplest of the three. Go figure, huh? I just feel like mine's more complicated, but... And then I'm just going to tie a knot. Let's see if I can... I think I cut this a tiny bit small. This ribbon is so pretty. It's like iridescent. And it looks especially nice, I think, when it's tied, because then you get some different elements in there. And then we'll just trim it off. Hope you guys are all still with me. <laughs> to look at the camera. It's like, I'm just chatting away here, happily creating. So there's that, and then I've got one other element. So I wanted the Balmy Blue card base to be sort of one step away from the Balmy Blue card stock, I mean, sorry, glimmer paper, rather. But I wanted to tie in the Balmy Blue in the center. Yay, there's a heart. Thank you, somebody. <laughs> so I'm putting one of um, a die-cut um, Balmy Blue um, snowflake. I've got one rolled-up glue, glue dot in the center and in all the um, points of the snowflake. And I'm just going to attach it to the front of my card. And there's these little dots in the center that can kind of be a guide for where to place it. And you can put multiple layers of glue dots there. Since I rolled it, it's basically two layers. And so it stands up just a little bit, but not as much as a dimensional which is really a nice little compromise sometimes. All right, so now I'm going to put in a rhinestone. And which color should I use? I think this one I prefer the, the lighter blue. I'm going to use a big one in the center. And then I'm going to show you my first version. And you can decide which one you like better. Aren't those such pretty, soft colors? I just love those colors. Now, I love the, the blues and the purples that are in this paper, too, but I'm totally in love with this paper also. So, there's the question. <laughs> blue and green. You gave me a blue and green heart to go with the blue and green color scheme, Sharon. I know you're doing that in your head. 
<laughs> All right. So, uh, so which do you prefer? Do you have a preference? This is just kind of more subtle, right? Because it's got that subtle designer paper element. A little bit of the purple in there. Just different. This one you don't have to choose because there's only one. And then you got these ones. So comment and let me know what you think. Sponging or no sponging? <laughs> and then this designer paper or that one? I hope you guys have liked these. Hope you've enjoyed them. I'm probably going to have to play with something besides the snowflakes soon. So this might be the last you see of them for a little while. I need to start using the new goodies. All right. Let's see what else we have to cover and let you go for the evening. So um, I pretty much did the building blocks of design as we went. I'm going to turn the camera face back around and uh, to me... Oh, I did it again. <laughs> I always mean to do that after, <laughs> so it's not facing, facing my uh, chest or whatever. Okay, anyway, <laughs> one of these days I'll learn. All right, so um, yeah, now I get to look at your comments. The purple, okay, yay, so fun. I can't wait to read your comments afterwards. I always miss that I am missing things that you're saying as I'm talking. I just, uh, you know, can only manage paying attention to so much at once but uh, I'm so glad you love them yay <laughs> it's so fun right just so much fun uh, I'll try to keep looking at your comments as I finish up so um, I pretty much talked about the reasons why how I built the design particularly for mine because the other ones were not really that were not really my own design um, and so I hope you're still appreciating hearing that my thought process as I do my creations. Um, and so I guess all it really is left to do is just some quick reminders and then I'll let you go. So don't forget to let me know if you want a mini catalog. Um, those will be going out soon, so I just uh, need to know soon. Um, stay tuned for information about the Taste of a Sweet product shares and next week, I don't know if I actually showed the other direction here, let me show you the other direction. There's my box, <laughs> my little box that hasn't even been opened. Actually, it's not a little box at all. It's a big box. <laughs> so I'll be assembling the Taste of Sweet product shares in this week, and I will be sharing them next week um, with the link in my newsletter on Wednesday. Um, and let's see. Yeah, and the Maker's Mojo early bird deadline is December 14th. Let me know if you have questions about that event. Love to see some of you guys there, or all of you there for that matter. Um, and if you have questions about the starter kit opportunity, let me know about that as well. So there, it, now is a great time to join, but January will also be a great time to join. And for different reasons at each time, January will be celebration. So there will be a celebration special offer at that time too. So, um, you know, it's always good. You can always just reach out to me and say, what's, what should I do? <laughs> this is my situation. I'd like some help and I'm always happy to help. It's all about you and what works best for you. <laughs> so um, anyway, who doesn't want a discount, right? <laughs> so I'll be back next Thursday, same time, same channel, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for some more Treehouse TV. Lots of fun projects. I have some fun things in store already in my head planned and in card form. Um, so I'll look forward to seeing you back then. And my blog post will be up on Saturday for this project and um, the video will go live on Saturday as well. So if you missed some of it and you want to see it on YouTube on the replay, you can look there too as well. So um, wonderful. Um, I will see you next week. Mwah! And I see, Bonnie, you, you would like a catalog, and I probably should have your, your, your um, address, but don't – maybe I'll see the comment. Anyway, um, <laughs> I will do my best to remember from the comment. I just flashed across the screen. <laughs> you might want to email me too. Um, Anyway, all right, see you guys next week. Mwah! <laughs>